This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Howard versus Stewart. Ms. Howard, it's my understanding that you are suing Ms. Stewart for a tattoo gone horribly wrong. You're asking this court for $1,000 for your past expenses, $2,000 for your future expenses, $50,000 for emotional distress for a total award of $53,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Stewart, you believe you gave Ms. Howard what she asked for. Had she been paying attention, she would have gotten what she wanted, but what she got is what she asked for, true? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Ms. Howard, tell me why you wanted a tattoo. I wanted this tattoo to commemorate the memory of my grandmother that just passed away a year ago. She referred to me as her firstborn because I was her firstborn grandchild. She basically raised me along with my parents when my parents weren't there. She meant the world to me. She's the number one person that knows absolutely everything about me. And when she left me a year ago, I was so hurt. I've never felt pain like that before. And I just wanted to do something nice to have of her memory with me forever. What was your plan for the tattoo? I wanted to get a tattoo that had her favorite flower, which are roses, and I wanted it to read, I love granny born first. And I wanted it to be written, the word granny, in her handwriting that she left for me in a letter before she passed away. And then I looked up the best tattoo shops around me and I found Queenie's Tattoo Shop. It had the best reviews and on her website it said 100% satisfied customers. Okay. Miss Stewart, tell me about your shop. I've been tattooing for 15 years. I've owned this shop for 12. Um, like, like she said, even, you know, she looked me up online. She saw that I have really good reviews. I tattoo a lot of celebrities and musicians. Tattoos by me are not cheap. Um, I take my work very seriously. And she came in wanting to tattoo for, for her grandmother, and she made an appointment. So what happened? So I showed Queenie the design, and I asked, could you make this look pretty? Let me get Sheriff Matt to, to get that for you. So this is the design you went in with, right? Yes, that's just a rough draft of my writing, which I kind of wanted it to look like, but I wanted her to add roses and make it look pretty, obviously. And where it says Granny, that's actually your grandmother's signature. Yes, Your Honor. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. And born first is what she called you. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, did you understand that, Ms. Stewart? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Okay, and you remember seeing this document? Yes, I do. Did you take this and turn it into a fancier design? Yes, and everything that I, I did, she approved. Uh, I went over everything with her. Um, she, every, every time I, I made an arrangement or adjustment, she, she said it looked great um, when I... So when you I, were careful in trying to figure out exactly what she wanted? Yes, yes. So, Ms. Howard, what happened? She said, come in a couple days after to get your tattoo. So I went in, and everything went great until a couple days later, I had a staff party along with my second grade fellow staff teachers and some parents. And it was my first time showing off the tattoo. I was so excited. I wore a low-cut dress, made sure it showed my back. I was hanging out at the party until people started pointing and laughing at me. And I'm like, what's going on? Do I have something on my face? And I go to the bathroom quickly, and I have a coworker following me behind. And she goes, um, why do you have a tattoo that says, uh, I love granny porn? And I said, oh. granny porn? Like, so this, I'm in disbelief. This... I, am, I didn't ask for granny porn. Do I look like someone that would have profanity written on me? I'm a second grade teacher. I'm so embarrassed at this point. So you think... Until you see it, you think your tattoo is going to say, I love granny born first, not granny porn first. Yes, I'm pretty sure my grandmother is rolling around in her grave right now looking at this. Granny porn? Your Honor, <laughs> I showed her the design from the get-go. I, I drew it out, I showed it to her, she said it looks great. I made a stencil, I showed it to her, she said it looks great. I put it on her skin, she said, okay, it looks great. This is not my fault. She approved every aspect of this design. I'm not responsible for this. She said this is what she wanted, she was happy with it, and she gave me the go-ahead. Okay, so go through the process, because I want to see what your safeguards are. What do you say to her on the first day? Well, on the first day, she was asking a bunch of questions. She brought in the design, and then I went from there. And so I, when I, when I brought this out and I showed it to her, I said, you know, is this what you want? And she so said, So you yeah. showed her the design on this iPad? Yes. Okay. 
And do you remember seeing this design? She showed me the design when I'm laying on my stomach. She showed me from behind. She came up behind me with an iPad saying, does this look right? I'm laying down, upside down. How am I supposed to... From my angle, that B. So you're on like your stomach, yes, and sir. you're looking back this way to try to look at the design to make sure it's accurate. Yes, Your Honor. She should have shown me the design when I was sitting up, not laying down. That's so unprofessional. So when you're lying on your stomach and you're looking over your shoulder, you look at the design and you think you're seeing "I love Granny" born first. Yes, Your Honor. And that's why you said yes. Yes, Your Honor. But instead, the tattoo said "I love Granny." Porn first. Yes, Your Honor, and I would have never approved of something like that. I do not look like somebody that wants something like that written on me. So I showed you this from the get-go. You approved you it three separate times. You showed me when I was time. laying down on my stomach. I didn't show it to you upside down. Do you show down? all your clients Talk on their me, stomach? Ladies. So you put granny porn on her back, and you say it's not your fault. I went off the design that she showed me, and she approved every aspect of it. I am not responsible for this. She had ample time to go through and tell me that she wanted changes or that she didn't like things, and she never said a word. Are you illiterate? Can you not know the difference from a B to a P? I'm well, asking. Well, hold on now. Doesn't that apply to you, though? Don't I you know the difference design. between a P and a B? Yes, I do. And if she I'm... would have shown me when I was sitting You're a teacher. down, don't you know your ABCs? My stomach, you don't know your ABCs. You clearly Obviously, don't. You this is your design. Ladies, talk this to is me. your design. Talk to me. Miss Stewart, who likes granny porn? I mean, you have to know that. I don't know her life. How do you think I feel trying to go to a family barbecue? I can't even go outside now without wearing a jacket. Yes, it's literally like 85 degrees outside and I have to wear a jacket this at recess with my kids. This is so embarrassing. I'm mortified. I was trying to just honor my grandmother and now I have my whole family against me. Let, let's call this what it is. Miss Stewart, you knew that she didn't want the words granny porn on her back, right? Correct. That is not what I wrote. And if she wants to interpret it that way, it was on her to tell me that she wanted change. And, and well, I wait, 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 wait a minute now. You made a stencil, some kind of transfer, right? Yes, Your Honor. And it said granny porn. It said granny born. Porn. Okay, granny born. But you tattooed granny porn. <sighs> no, no, I did not. Okay, well, I'm not responsible did. for this. <laughs> you can see on the plasma her, her note. It says, I love granny, born first. That's a, that's a big mistake. That's what it says. It says and, porn. And on your stencil, it says, I love granny, porn. Maybe I'm missing something. I born and porn are two different universes. I would ask you, is this what you want? And if you said yes, then that's what's going on you. She signed a waiver. I mean, I am not responsible for this. I mean, I, I have You bring right your here. waiver with you? Yes, Your Honor, I did. All right, Sheriff Matt, will you get it for me? Thank you, sir. I got the best. Let's look at it. And, uh, Ms. Howard, is that your signature at the bottom? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so it reads, I waive and release to the fullest extent permitted by law all claims, action, suits against any person of the best little tattoo shop from all liability whatsoever. Then it says, Best Little Tattoo Shop and its employees have given me the full opportunity to ask any question about the procedure and application of my tattoo, and all of my questions, if any, have been answered to my total satisfaction. After such consultation, I have agreed to have the procedure. Let me give you a legal lesson. You must read legal documents when you sign them, especially when you waive all of your rights in case something bad happens. You sign this, and if this taken in a vacuum, this case is over and you lose. Now, it is not in a vacuum because this court has to consider all the evidence, but this waiver is very important. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Folks, to understand tattoos and the business of tattoos, this court has brought Reality star and tattoo artist Cat Tat is here today. Sheriff Matt, will you bring Cat Tat into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Cat, now you've recently opened your own shop. Tell me about that. Yes, we actually just recently celebrated the one year anniversary for my shop. Um, it's called Enigma Tattoo. We're located in Beverly Hills. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Now you've tattooed a lot of celebrities, right? 
Yes. Like who? Um, I've tattooed Idris Elba, Faith Evans, Super Bowl champions, um, Von Miller, Shane Ray, um, musicians, Young M.A. I mean, countless celebrities are constantly coming through the shop. <laughs> You've changed a lot of famous skin, haven't you? Yeah, you know, I do what I can. <laughs> now, what are your most popular designs? Um, well, people come to me for my close attention to detail. I specialize in really anything realistic, so portraits, flowers. Um, I do a ton of cover-ups as well. Maybe like 80% of what I do is, is cover-ups. People see that I specialize in these larger pieces and they think I can cover anything up, so, yeah. Are there any rules that apply to tattoos? Yes, there's a ton. Do your research. Make sure that you're in a professional shop. Make sure that you have researched your artists and they're capable of doing the type of work that you want. Double, triple check um, spelling, you know. Have you ever, when showing the tattoo to the client, have you ever shown it to the client while they're lying on their stomach? You know, my process is I put the design on you and I say, come on, let's walk over to this mirror. You look in the mirror. If it's on your back, I'm going to give you a handheld mirror so you can look at it like this and see what it looks like from that. So I always take extra precautions. It's a permanent procedure. It's like mini surgery. Now, you've brought along a video that you've submitted to this court. Let's mm -hmm. put it up on the plasma screen and walk me through it. This is a video of me tattooing myself, right? Because what better person to practice on than yourself? So um, what I'm doing, I'm applying my stencil, basically, from the image that I approved. And once the stencil is on me, I let it dry, take a look at it, make sure it looks like, you know, what you want, and then you begin the tattoo. And then it's no going back from there. And you <laughs> did that to yourself? I did. You mentioned that you do a lot of cover-ups. Yes. What's, what's the process of covering up another tattoo? If it's a dark design, then likely you're gonna have to do something full color to saturate it so that it's really covered up. Now, Miss Howard has a tattoo on her back that says Granny Porn. Yes, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Could you come over to the monitor and yes. show us how you would cure this problem? Yes. So, there's a clear misspelling. I mean, this... Typically, you would think a B or a P could be turned into a B by adding an extra loop, but the spacing here is just off, you know? This would look ridiculous to try to put a small little loop in here. So this tattoo, 100%, you have to wait till it heals, wait till some of this bruising goes away, and then I'd be able to cover it. And I would cover it with something similar to this. Oh, my God. That's really beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Beautiful. Fully saturated roses that completely get rid of what you have. And then we can apply the correct spelling and the correct phrase that you wanted and just erase the whole mistake from your memory. So, Ms. Howard, that looks like a good fix. That I mean, not, not what you wanted, but a good fix. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's all I wanted. Something beautiful like that to honor my grandmother. Come on back here, Ms. Kat. <laughs> you can return to the witness stand. Ms. Stewart, this is a permanent deal, right? Yes, Your Honor. If she doesn't get this covered up, she's got granny porn on her back. <sighs> while, while we <laughs> chuckle about that, this is something that haunts her. You see that, right? This is really not funny. My whole family, my grandmother, was a church-going woman. I, like, can't even walk in a church right now. I went off the design that you approved. You did I'm not. Sorry. You did not. This I did not, not approve fault. the this word porn. You porn and porn are completely different. Of this and like she said, there's even you. no and room you to that fix the beat. I'm sorry. Ladies, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> Folks, this, like so many of the other cases that I've presided over, is a personal injury case with three components. You, as the plaintiff, have to prove that Ms. Stewart was wrong and that Ms. Stewart's wrong caused your injury. And you've put up evidence that you did your best to make sure that this tribute to your grandmother would be perfect. Yeah. I love Granny, born first. Right. Yeah. And you trusted this professional to do what you asked her to do. Instead, you suffered a very embarrassing moment. You, Ms. Stewart, you went through the protocol to get her to approve what you put on her skin that you're not the marshal of what's appropriate. If she wants it, doesn't matter what it is, if she approves it and signs your waiver, then you're gonna give her what she wants. Well, in this case, everyone must be attentive to the details, not just the professional, but the client. You gotta make sure that what you want is what you're gonna get. You are the backstop. Here, the issue is, 
whether a service provider such as a tattoo artist has a duty beyond giving the service that you asked for. The evidence shows you wanted born, but you signed a waiver saying you're getting what you wanted, you understand, you had time to ask questions, and you're ready to put the tattoo on, and she put on what she showed to you. The law requires me to find in your favor, even though I think you should have asked her, do you really want porn? I find in the defendant's favor and against you because the law requires me to do that based on the evidence. And that is my final verdict. This matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Andrew Finkelstein has to say. A tattoo is permanent. The plaintiff knew this going into the procedure and should have made sure the artwork, including the spelling, was 100% correct. She did not do this. She signed a waiver that released the defendant from all claims of negligence arising out of the tattoo process. Please, read and understand what claims you may be waiving before signing any release. The repercussions can be permanent. I feel terrible for the victim. And yes, ma'am. If it's possible, I would like to offer her my services for this cover of free of service. Did you hear that? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. That means the world to me and to my grandmother and my family. Thank you so much. I got you, girl. Look at you taking care of. Today on Personal Injury Court, you got a tattoo on your forehead. They were running a contest where the first listener to tattoo the letters K-R-U-D on their forehead would win a $250,000 prize. I'm pretty famous in these parts, mostly for the crazy pranks and antics that we get up to. You're asking this court to award you $510,000. Radio DJ Ricky Smiley, you are known for the best pranks ever. We told the listener that we were gonna drop $100,000 in a helicopter. He's insane! Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Bell versus KRUD and Jones. Mr. Bell, it's my understanding from the documents you filed with this court that you are suing KRUD, the radio station, and its DJ for your putting a tattoo on your head. You're asking this court to award you damages of $250,000, future medical of $10,000, pain and suffering of $250,000 for a total award of $510,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Jones and Ms. Young, you are here representing KRUD, right? Yes, Your, yes, Honor. Your Honor. It's you all's position that this was a prank. He should know that. This is his fault. He did a stupid thing, and it's not your fault. That's right, That's Your correct. Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Uh, how long have you been listening to KRUD? Probably, I'd say, about the time that they started airing. Okay. And uh, I love their music. I love their shows. I guess you could also say, up to this point, anyway, I've also been a fan of Crazy Cyrus. So I found out that uh, they were running a contest or promotion, if you will, where the first listener to tattoo the letters K-R-U-D on their forehead would win a $250,000 prize. Now, Your Honor, a little backstory. My, I live with my parents and they are about to lose their house. There was a foreclosure. My father was laid off from his job after 22 years and I saw this as a heaven sent, if you will, opportunity that came at just about the right time for me to help save my parents and my house as well. So you put a tattoo on your forehead to save your parents' house? Yes, sir, that's correct, in short. You are a really good son. Crazy, but definitely a good son. <laughs> Ms. Young, you are here representing KRUD, the radio station, right? That is correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Jones, you are the DJ for KRUD, right? That's right, sir. I'm Cyrus Jones, AKA Crazy Cyrus, as many of uh, maybe, maybe members here know me as. I'm pretty famous in these parts, mostly for the crazy pranks and antics that we get up to in our station. We actually brought some video evidence of past contests that we run with the station, starting out with bobbing for pig's feet. That's right, hogs hoof. A showdown to win free groceries for the year. Uh, next, we've got the battle of the bridegrooms. Uh, you're gonna see some guys in drag. This 
wins the drag race uh, to win a $10,000 wedding ring. And of course, our famous mayonnaise belly flop challenge uh, for $5,000 worth of concert tickets. Obviously, we get up to some crazy stuff at KRUD. Okay, so what happened? I found out about this contest, if you'd like to call it that, from a friend that morning, and naturally I was a little skeptical. So what I did to cover all basis was I called the radio station and I spoke with a gentleman who identified himself as one of Cyrus's crew. Okay. And he did, in fact, confirm that this offer was legit. He also directed me to the contest page on the, on the station's website, and the contest rules explained everything. So it says, three easy steps to win a fortune. Number one, take our call letters, K-R-U-D. Number two, tattoo them across your forehead, which is what you did. Yes, sir. Be the first listener to do it and win $250,000. Yes, sir. That simple. So as you can imagine, I didn't waste any time. I dashed down to the first tattoo parlor I could find that was near my house, and I asked for a rush job on the tattoo, which, by the way, was not cheap. Uh, it took a couple hours for- And the, you got the, a tattoo on your forehead. Yes, sir, I did. As soon as they were done, paid them up, dashed down to the radio station, and the people just looked at me. They glared at me in disbelief, almost like they, didn't, they weren't even aware that this was going on. Okay. They started pointing at me and laughing at me. Who, who does that, Your Honor? In a professional setting, who does that? They took out their phones and started taking pictures of me, probably posting it on social media. All right. So eventually, after I was standing there for about 10 minutes, a representative came down from the studio and explained to me that this was, quote unquote, a big misunderstanding. He didn't say a prank. He said a big misunderstanding. Okay. And that there was no prize money to be won for me. Ms. Young, how did you find out that Mr. Bell had come down to the station? Well, I was made aware of it by a staff member. Now, I did not see Mr. Bell. However, I did read an article where it did say a guy with a tattoo on his, head, on his forehead, and then also I did see some photographs. How did you find out, Mr. Jones? Well, I was on air. One of my producers told me while I was on air that Mr. Bell had come into the station with this tattooed on his forehead. I mean, we get up to some crazy stuff, but I could have never imagined in a million years somebody would have actually tattooed our station letters to their forehead. $250,000 really? is a lot of money. There are a lot of folks that would do that, right? right? Seriously. How's he to know that this is not real? Your Honor, he clearly did not read the rules. I mean, come on. If he would have went to the webpage, it would have clearly said there was a link on there that said official rules. See the link right there? If he would have clicked on that link, the link would have took him to the page that said April Fools. No. Did you see that we link? certainly did not see that, Your Honor. Should I click and I have vision problems in both my two eyes. I can't see something that small. Coming up. Ha ha, we got you. April Fool's is what he would have seen had That's he clicked he on that link. Absolutely. It was an April Fool's joke. We ran radio ads all the way up until April 1st. This court has consulted one of the country's best, Ricky Smiley. We went up in a helicopter. We told them, listen, that we were going to drop $100,000. Sheriff Department came out. It made national news. I found out that uh, they were running a promotion, if you will, where the first listener to tattoo the letters K-R-U-D on their forehead would win a $250,000 prize. I could have never imagined in a million years somebody would have actually tattooed our station letters to their forehead. So this Ha Ha We Got You April Fools from the whole crazy crew at KRUD Radio is what he would have seen had he clicked on that link. Absolutely. You know what? What we've heard today is someone who was rushed and ready to win some money, and he didn't take the necessary steps to protect himself when he could have just followed the link. He heard from a friend about this contest. I see how you spin it that way. But you got to see, you got a good son in a desperate situation trying to save his parents' house. He gets an opportunity to get a quarter of a million dollars because y'all say, put a tattoo on and come get your money. 
Do you see how he got there? I He's understand what you're saying, Your Honor, but he actually entered into an agreement with his mm -hmm. tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. He had to have fill out some sort of um, document that said he was making this decision on his own. How, is that, how no, is that relevant, Your Honor? We how have is that no agreement with this gentleman to pay him this money in order to p repay him for that Your tattoo. Honor, doesn't the law say verbal is binding in advertising? Well, there's a little more to it than that. Okay. Thank you. The law does hold you responsible for the representations that you make publicly. So whether verbal or written, you've got to be very careful about those representations. But why didn't you click on the little link on the bottom? Your Honor, I missed that. It was too small for me to see. So you never saw this second page? Yes, sir, that's correct. I never saw that second page. Mr. Bell, you are asking this court to award you $250,000 for your damages, yes. $10,000 for your future medicals, and $250,000 for pain and suffering. Now, you've told me about how the people reacted at the station when you went down there. What's the general public's reaction when you go around to some place like lunch or take your parents out to dinner or go to work? In short, crud. <laughs> I mean, Your Honor, there's been a laundry list of things how this has horribly negatively impacted my life. I lost my job because of this. My girlfriend broke up with me. My dating life's been a shambles. You know, I wanted to use this money to help save our home. And the biggest thing about it is the tattoo laser removal surgery that I'm gonna need to have, yes, the sir. procedures. I can't afford that. And from what I understand, the research that I've done, it may not even be possible to remove all of this without scarring. Next. I was assured by someone at the station at the time that that was legit. We ran radio ads all the way up until April 1st, stating this was our biggest prank yet. Let's listen to that ad. The craziest prank we've ever pulled. Renowned comedian, radio DJ, Ricky Smiley. Well, the radio station here, they approved it according to Miss Young. Yeah, and uh, you know, they in court. <laughs> <laughs> so you put a tattoo on your forehead to save your parents' house? Yes, sir. That's correct. You are a really good son. Crazy, but definitely a good son. He didn't take the necessary steps to protect himself when he could have just followed the link. He heard from a friend about this contest. Mr. Bell, at 5,000 feet, okay, you, you got to wrap your arms around some of the common sense of, do I really get a tattoo on my head for something? This is the day, right? Well, April 1st? Well, one thing that He's said, crazy Cyrus. He doesn't do anything that's sane. He's insane. <laughs> well, I was assured by someone at the station at the time that that was legit. And I've never seen any kind of contests or pranks that involved advertising money to anyone. Your Honor, what he was told by our team member was, this is a legitimate contest that we're running. Go to the website to learn more. And he didn't follow the link. We ran radio ads all the way up until April 1st, stating this was our biggest prank yet. Let's listen to that ad. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming! The craziest prank we've ever pulled is gonna hit you right between the eyes, exclusively here at KRUD. Well, Mr. Bell, did you hear that? If, if you're a regular okay. listener, That's right. you would have heard that, right? Well, see, Your Honor, one thing I probably should mention is I work for a telecommunications company. I work the graveyard shift. I just happened to be off that day that it happened, and like I said, I heard from a friend. Yeah, but if they ran it all week, and you are a loyal fan of Crazy Cyrus, why wouldn't you hear at least once? That's a good question. Your Maybe Honor. they didn't run it as many times as they oh, said they did. Oh, don't start that. Don't well, start Well, unless you have that evidence. No, sir. Don't put that up. It's just more for me to get confused about. Yes, yeah. In order to better understand the relationship between a radio DJ and the listening audience, this court has consulted one of the country's best. Renowned comedian, radio DJ, Ricky Smiley. Sheriff Matt, will you get Mr. Smiley? Yes, sir. Honey. 
You're known all over the country for being a radio personality. Yes, sir. Well, in this case, it's a prank gone wrong. Now, you are known for the best pranks ever. What are some of your best ones? Uh, I was a part of a prank on the Buckwire Morning Show at 95.7, where we went up in a helicopter. We told the listener that we were going to drop $100,000. And uh, so traffic was bagged up. The sheriff department came out. It made national news. And we were going to throw out, like, $100,000 worth of Monopoly money. In this case, Crazy Cyrus Jones... Right. <laughs> he told the listening audience, get a tattoo of the call letters on your head and you get $250,000. Wow. What kind of responsibilities does a radio DJ have to the listening audience with a prank like this? Uh, you have a huge responsibility because it's a liability uh, to the people that own the station. Uh, number one, and then uh, we couldn't do anything like that unless it was approved by the general manager and the owner of the radio station. Well, the radio station here, they approved it, according to Miss Young. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they in court. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smiley, we appreciate you. Yes, thank sir, you thank so you much. Thank you for having me. Your Honor, we do do feel sorry for this gentleman yeah. who has put tattoo letters on his forehead. But we have done everything in our power to say this was a joke. You can actually check out our social media right now. Like I said, our fans eat all of this all up. Of us. So your fans, these fans knew it was a prank. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. We've had those contests. You know what the problem is? Yeah. I don't see any of those people with the letters K-R-U-D tattooed on their head. The verdict is in. Mr. Bell, you have put up evidence in this case that the radio station put out an advertisement that you get $250,000 to put the call letters on your head. But you did not click the little link in the corner that would have let you know that this was a prank. You all believe that had he clicked the link, he never would have had a tattoo on his head. This has horribly negatively impacted my life. I lost my job because of this. My girlfriend broke up with me. I wanted to use this money to help save our home. The biggest thing about it is the tattoo laser removal surgery that I'm gonna need to have. I can't afford that. Clearly, this was all a misunderstanding. It was an April Fool's joke. Folks, I think I have heard what I need to hear, and I am ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things, that the wrong caused harm. Mr. Bell, you have put up evidence in this case that the radio station and Mr. Jones put out an advertisement that you get $250,000 to put the call letters on your head. Now, you were under some duress in trying to save your parents' home. That is a noble thing, and I understand why you did that. Now, you had certain responsibilities. You called the station to ask someone, is this real? You actually got on the website and saw the advertisement itself. But you did not click the little link in the corner that would have let you know that this was absolutely a prank. You all believe that had he clicked the link, he never would have had a tattoo on his head. And what he did was a stupid thing that you all should not have to pay for. In a fraud case, Mr. Bell has to prove that you all represented something that you knew wasn't true, you knew somebody was likely to rely on it, that person relies on it, and then they're harmed. In the evidence, there are two things that really bug me. The advertisement that has the link that confirms this is a prank, the page that he should have read is the second page, and he'd only find it if he read this small language at the bottom. The second thing is, you all are playing on people who are desperate. We live in desperate times. And the law says if you do a prank, that there's a high likelihood that someone's going to do what you're enticing them to do. They do it, and they are harmed. You're bad, but your bill, you must pay for that. 
and I find against the defendants, and in your favor, I'm going to award $250,000 for your damages, $10,000 for your future medicals, $250,000 for pain and suffering, for a total award of $510,000. You don't even deserve it. That is my final verdict. You are one man, of our family. That is a grown man, man you're on who Order in this court. Decision. He's one of our family. Order in this court. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Gary Martin Hayes has to say. This case did not turn on the traditional wrong caused harm analysis. This one involved a fraud that caused the injury. The radio station advertised an opportunity to win a prize if the contestant did something crazy. They represented something that wasn't true, and Mr. Bell relied on it and was harmed. A safeguard should have been in place to make sure people knew that this was a prank. <laughs>